November 13th, 2016 at the River of Life Church in Fargo, North Dakota. Pennsylvania 
just to be a solution. Hallelujah. So if you are here this morning, you are not here by coincidence. You are part of a mighty army that God is raising up in Fargo. We are going to lead every churches in Fargo, North Dakota. We are going to plant the river of life church everywhere in North Dakota. We are going to go to other countries. We are going to plant the river of life church. Do not despise your little beginning. Hallelujah. God is going to lift us up. You may have your love to see this morning. And open your Bible to Luke. The Lord has a wonderful word for us this morning. Praise the God bless you. God bless you, River of Life family. God bless you, my lovely wife. Hallelujah. Who's have our precious uh, little baby in her stomach? You know, let me tell you. I love newborn babies. <laughs> newborn babies never smell. I mean, you you just want to lay close to she 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 never even seen a different side of me. Newborn babies bring joy. You can be fighting with your wife as soon as you have a newborn baby. Fight over, her, amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Look at those precious eyes. You gonna fight in front of that precious eye? You are real devil if you're gonna fight in front of a newborn baby, amen. That fight must come to an end, amen? amen. Bless all those who are having a newborn baby. But I can't wait to celebrate our newborn. You know, our one-year-old is going to be a big brother, and he's going to be teaching her. Hallelujah. I'm saying her because we want a girl. Hallelujah. Amen. Luke chapter 9, guys. Luke chapter 9. Somebody say, I'm going to go forward. How many people know Donald Trump is now president? Hallelujah. When you see Donald Trump become president, it means it's time to get your Bible. Hallelujah. I mean, if you wasn't close to your Bible, you need to buy a Bible because Donald Trump is president now. Hallelujah. Some of you, if, if you have immigration problem, suggest you pay that small money and fix your green card. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't let that $460 ruin your America. Hallelujah. Donald Trump will ship you in one little outfit, hallelujah. The worst thing you can do is somebody ship you to Africa with no clothes, hallelujah. They're going to look at you like, man, you're a real loser, hallelujah. <laughs> what did you do in America to ship you to us, amen? Luke chapter 9. The Lord has a word for us. Somebody say, God is wonderful. God is wonderful. Some of you wasn't even supposed to be here this morning, but you're here. By divine timing, you are here. Amen. And the Lord has a word for you this morning. Amen. We're going to go forward. Somebody say, we're going to go forward. We're going to go forward. Hallelujah. Because there's no going back. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 9, verse 57. Sister Sarah, thank you so much for reading this morning. Uh, I'm going to read this. Uh, Luke chapter 9, verse. let's start on verse 57. We believe in the word of God so much at this church. We want to teach you the word of God so you can be able to know God. To love, to love God is to know him through his word. Hallelujah. If you buy a vacuum cleaner, of course you're going to read a manual. But this is a manual of life. Bible, basic instruction before leaving earth. I'm so happy today, hallelujah, because we have a true testimony in the house. Hallelujah. God bless you, men of God. We'll meet you soon. Hallelujah. It's good when you're looking at a true testimony. Testimony Sunday is next week where we eat and we celebrate and uh, we uh, there's going to be some baptism too. So if anybody want to get baptized, let us know. Baptism Sunday is next week. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 9 verse 57. Jesus has something for us this morning. And it said, And it came to pass that as they went in the way, a certain man said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee whatsoever thou shalt go. Somebody say, I will follow Jesus. I will follow Jesus. I will follow Jesus. I will, I will follow Jesus. You have no chance, you have no choice no more. When you see, when you see somebody like Donald Trump get in power, you must get close to Jesus. Because the Bible said they will call good evil and evil good. We are living in a reverse time. Evil is good and good is evil. Hallelujah. But we got to do it like Jesus. Hallelujah. If Jesus suffered and died, you got to go through the same thing. Amen? So if you're going to go out denying Jesus, you're going to just die a punk. And it's a sorrowful thing to die a punk. Amen? Amen. Luke chapter 9, verse 57. He said, so the guy came and said, Jesus, I will follow you whatsoever 
you, you're going to go. And Jesus answered in uh, verse 58, said, Jesus answered to him. He said, what he said? First half home. Mm -hmm. And bird has nest. Nest. For the son of man uh -huh. has not where to lay his head. He said, Jesus said, birds have nests. Foxes have home. He said, but me, the son of man, have nowhere to lay my head. We're living in the time where pastors can't even preach unless they have a, a plane or a jet plane or a new car. Hallelujah. But you hear Jesus saying, I have nowhere to lay my head. I came to do the Lord's work. Verse 59, he said, and he said unto another, follow me. And Jesus has come to talk to you this morning, to follow him. Jesus has come to tell you this morning to follow him. Amen. Hallelujah. It's time to follow him. He said, follow me. But he said to Jesus, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. Hallelujah. See, this is what we do. We have so much excuses. When it comes to following Jesus, we are the only one that we expect God to accept our excuses. One day, your excuses is going to be the death of you. Yeah, amen. Here, Jesus has an invitation here. That's what the gospel is. The gospel is an invitation to heaven. But it's our excuses is killing us. Oh, I work. Oh, my work. Oh, my job. We're talking about something that's going to save your soul. You can't save yourself. All the money you make can't save you. So when Jesus said, follow me, stop the excuses. We're living in dangerous times. Hallelujah. Amen. You came today for a real world. Hallelujah. Brother, Brother Joe, somebody doing the, the recording, okay? Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We have a Facebook page. We have a YouTube page. We can share all the information. But for order and decency, let us have just a, a solid group to do it, hallelujah. Because we don't want to be like other churches. Other churches, there's no order. They're, they're doing things anyway, you know. We have to function like heaven. Only the king of kings can be exalted. Only Jesus can be lifted up. So the flesh is a, is a very wicked thing because once we allow people to recall, then the next thing you see, uh, somebody come in with dark shades. So other churches you go, they were in dark shades in the service. Lord have mercy. You were in dark shades of the church. You were real witchcraft. Hallelujah. You're trying to hide your eyes. But let us keep it decent and orderly. Hallelujah. Let's go back to the text. So Jesus said, let the dead bury. Jesus was not trying to be unsympathetic towards this guy. He wasn't saying that, um, that his, his dad was not, or uh, his burial was not important. But Jesus is saying, don't put nothing ahead of me. Amen. Don't Put me, don't make me second. He's talking to an unbeliever. Basically, if an unbeliever died, what can you do for them? You can't do nothing to his, his, his uh, funeral. Most people go to funeral to drink and, and, and lie and talk about the person who's dead. But when Jesus come and call you, you can't use that as an excuse. The person's dead. What can you do for them? Let me go bury my father. Jesus said, excuse me, my brother. Let the dead bury the dead. He was done with it. He said, but go down and preach the kingdom of God. Jesus said, forget all that. Go preach my word. People are dying all around us. We are all evangelists. We are all priests and kings unto our Lord. Don't look at me like a pastor. You are a pastor too. You are a minister. You are an evangelist. There is a talent in your life. And Jesus is going to ask you one day, what did you do with my talent? You're going to tell him, oh, Jesus, you know the overtime was a lot in Fargo. You know there was a lot of overtime in Fargo. That's actually going to be some people's answer. Yeah. Jesus, I'm going to turn down that overtime. That's not an excuse. So Jesus is teaching us this here this morning, in this end time, how to behave as Christian. But this is not where we're headed this morning. Verse, uh, verse 61 of Luke chapter 9. Every, everyone should be looking in the Bible and looking at this text. That's the kind of church we are. We want you to see it for yourself before you say the pastor was preaching his own word. Oh, matter of fact, you got a microphone there? You all right? They can't hear you. Thank you. Verse 61. 61. 
Another one also said, Lord, I will follow thee, but let me first go back, then farewell, which at, at home. Right there, right there. So another one come up and said, Lord, I'm going to follow you. And we all have a desire to follow Jesus. But look at what he said. He said, let me go back home and tell my family goodbye. Let me go back home and bid them farewell. Farewell is like a departure speech. He said, let me go back home and tell them goodbye. Well, we're not in liberty to do that anymore, guys. Let me tell you something. You can't be consulting your past about your future. You can't. There's no way Jesus is going to call you and you want to go back and tell your old friends that Jesus has called you. You know what's going to happen? Most likely when you get there, the table is going to be filled with Hennessy. You gonna come back to Jesus when the table is filled with Hennessy? You love Hennessy, but you—that's the point. You can't go back. When Jesus called you, Jesus wants you to go forward. Why does He not want you to go backwards? And that's what we're gonna be talking about today. So, the theme of this message is going forward is the only way. Somebody said going forward is the only way. Say going forward is the only way. Some of you, the reason why you're here this morning, because you've been going backwards too much. Your neck should be hurting by now. You, you, every time you try to walk forward, you're, you, you find yourself going backwards. It's time to go forward. That in Jesus, you can't go back. Because where you're coming from was not good to you. People never believe in you. First scripture there says, Sarah. Ephesians 5 verse 16. Uh -huh. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Read the next one. Ephesians 5 verse 17. Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Paul said redeeming the time. Take every time that you have and do something worth for the kingdom. You don't have no, time doesn't belong to you. Time belongs to God. Tomorrow could be your last day. You will find yourself in the excuses. That's why I thank these ladies. They could be doing anything, but they say, they call me on Saturday, they say, Pastor, come and pick us up. And I'm the happiest man in the world. When I hang up that floor, I am just excited because they know the time. We don't have, you're not living on your own time. It will be ignorant to, to think that. Hallelujah. So the Bible said, be not unwise, but understand the purpose of God in your life. There is a purpose for all of us. We are purpose-driven people. Amen. You wasn't just created to be walking around here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are purpose-driven people. You got to find your purpose. Be not unwise, but understanding the word of God for your life. See, this walk of Christ, God is calling you by yourself. We get so accustomed to thinking that we have to bring people along. You don't have to, you, when you came for your mother's belly, you came by yourself. See, we get, some people are defeated because they try to bring so many people with them. You want to bring your cousin with you? You want to bring your uncle with you? You want to bring your auntie with you? Your enemies with you?